Video games. So, Detroit Become Human. Uh, now, this isn't the first time we saw it, but we got a really good glimpse of it at this year's E3. And I kind of wanted to just jump into it because this is the next game from Quantic Dream. This is the game studio that brought you Indigo Prophecy, Heavy Rain, and Beyond Two Souls. Now, these are, are and very... Omicron. And Omicron. I always forget Omicron, but it always reminds me. Omicron as well. It, it was one of the earlier games that I think probably it was. less people played, played but it. was a big deal. And it was crazy. It was yeah. a pretty crazy game. Um, but but in in those games, what they do is they just make choice so important. Um, like, I, I still remember the first time I played Indigo Prophecy. You were a detective. You can go into the scene of a murder, and if you collect enough evidence, one thing happens. If you don't, if you miss one piece of evidence here or there, you know, totally different thing happens. And then in Heavy Rain, how you could have your characters killed off. Uh, you had like five mm -hmm. main characters you were following, and they could get killed off at any given moment. You know, right. and and they they just make choice so important. Uh, I also I like the way that the story is told in such a way that you're you're playing both sides of any scenario. Mm -hmm. You're not yeah. just the detectives in Indigo Prophecy. You're also the murderer in Indigo Prophecy, mm -hmm. and you also see a bunch of more perspective to it depending on how you play things out. In Heavy Rain as well, you're you're multiple mm -hmm. characters. You're not even sure who is what or who your main character is or what they did or didn't do. Uh, but because you're seeing things only in slices from these uh, different perspectives and playing off against each other, depending on what you do in one set might lead you closer to another character in another or mm -hmm. further away. And, and so the cool thing with Be Detroit Become Human is, and how they're going to expand so much on all this choice, is if you don't know the premise of the game, it is about some androids. Uh, we're in, it's in the future, and androids do all the menial labor. They, they clean the streets. They do you know menial tasks. They take out the trash. They do all that stuff. And uh, all of a sudden, I believe it's three different androids wake up. Uh, I'm not sure if it's three or if it's two and one human. But there's going to be three main protagonists. But they wake up, and one of them discovers that he has the ability to wake up other androids. And when I say wake up, I mean he becomes emotionally. He has real thoughts. He can. He's got a self awareness. Free will almost. He's self awareness is a really good. That's the best way to put it, actually. Um, and so he spreads that out. And what you can do is you can choose the way the story is going to unfold. Do you want to go a violent revolution or a peaceful revolution? Uh, and and if you go peaceful, is what if this person dies or if that person dies or what if they bring violence against you? And you know, it's going to be or if you go violent, then they want to have weight to the violence. One of the really cool things I saw about this game is that the writer of this game, uh, he was writing and he said he was about midway through it when the Paris attacks happened. And so he went back and he kind of looked at video games in general and he said, hey, video games, I'm not saying that they glorify violence, but they make violence easy, uh, meaning there's not much weight behind the violence. I mean, and, and of course, in games like Call of Duty, you shoot somebody. OK, yeah, that's the point of the game. Uh, but like then you have games like GTA. You, you can go through and be relatively peaceful. I mean, you do the mission, still kill people or you can just go through and just run over pedestrians all over the place. What he wanted to do is he wanted to make any type of violent actions that you want to take very very viable like mm -hmm. you can still go out and do it it's part of the choice but he wanted to, those to have more weight to him he wanted you to feel uh that you're being violent it, not necessarily to make you feel bad but to give you more of that emotional spectrum and when i heard this i thought this game is going to be the game that changes anybody who was a naysayer on a video games art because that is a, a discussion that we've had on this show a bunch of times and it's one that i'll continue to have because there's still a good portion of the people out there that say video games is just you know it's 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 trivial there's it's not an art form and i couldn't disagree more not only do they create worlds in this this stuff like uh, you would get out of any good book or good movie um but they they give you choice they they the art that comes through it i mean if a painting that is hanging in the national gallery of art is you know a scenery like look at some of the sceneries that these uh, uh graphic designers put together is that who does that is it the, or is it uh the, the art graphic artists there sometimes artists. it's actually just artists there's actually a lot of people that work on these you know there'll be people that do the initial sketches there'll be people that do the cgi there will be people that do all any number and if of you things. look at some of the landscapes that they get and just the the buildings the cities that are created i mean you look at video games they create an entire world uh, and yeah, sometimes it's based on our world, but there's so many games out there that's just nothing based on our world. It's just it's just its own place. Not that that matters. And, I mean, art is yeah. often based on our world too. So. Well, that's very true too. Yeah, I'm just saying it's just so creative, and they tell a story. And the only, the the, other, the thing about this story is it's interactive. It gets you 
it gets you into the story. You're deciding how this one goes and you're almost creating your own art when you're playing a game like this. So I, I just, I, I just, what I think about art, when I think about what is art, what do you consider art? And I think it's something that somebody else has created to make you feel something. To, to, to emit emotion to you. And that's, that's in my eyes, the most pure form of art. Like when you watch a really good movie and the main character dies at the end and you cry, that's, that's you feeling emotion on this fictitious character, but you feel it. You're, you're getting that emotion from the artist. Or when you look at a painting and you just get a perspective and, and you're just like, wow, I, that, that's just cool. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it puts you at ease. Like I, I've seen paintings, paintings and I'm lucky to live near DC and I can go to these museums and you just, you're just like, Oh, wow. That is, that is just, you either get anger or you get, you get calmness. There's so many different emotions that get emoted to you through this work. Or when you listen to a good song and you feel an emotion from it, that's the same thing I think about video games. I mean, they, they're one of the most purest forms of expression that I can think of because they give you everything. They give you the visual, they give you the physical, they, give, they stimulate your brain and they transmit those emotions to you. And I think that that's what we're going to get out of Detroit Become Human. And now this is me speculating because the game doesn't come out until 2018. I haven't played it. I've seen a little bit of gameplay on it, but if it can live up to what the these people are promising and to what we've seen developed throughout the years from Quantic Dream uh, with Indigo Prophecy, even mm -hmm. heavy rain they kind of hit a speed bump with beyond two souls but with now detroit become human i can feel that this is going to take it to the next level this is what's going to be the game where we look at it okay you can no longer argue that video games are art this is one of the purest forms of art that you can ever get and uh, I, I i just really that's my hopes for this game so i just put this game on the highest pedestal i possibly could so if it's not the greatest game of all time i'm gonna be disappointed but it is it, i think it's really good for my argument on why video games are art because it is such a, a pure expression of emotion that you don't get from everything i mean that a lot of people everybody would consider art you know you don't get that from a lot well i agree with you that video games are art and that this is going to be great for showing that to a to a high extent there, there's still going to be people that are not going to accept it, that they're going to yes. define things by their criteria or they're just going to dismiss it. They're not going to change their view. Just because. Some people probably will change their view because of this, yeah. but I don't think that many... But I don't granted, think everyone yeah, there's a, anytime you do anything, there's always going to be people on every side of the fence. I'm just saying, saying that this yeah. is going to be the people that, you know... That but I will say it probably... Or hopefully, hopefully, we'll see what happens when it comes out and uh, what the, the actual result is and the quality. But it'll hopefully have uh, perhaps a similar impact in that regard and in, in more regards as one of the uh, early, I think what was it, Ultima 4 did that people still talk about where it also tried to put in consequences for games and a morality idea for the game so that you really had to think about what you were doing on a on a moral level, things that um, usually are taken for granted in games in order to try to influence and communicate something more to the user. Like uh, mm -hmm. it, it was known for things like you could easily take something from, um, steal something from someone's house when you were weak for instance, which is very common in games. You go to someone's house, you find a chest, you take something, you leave, right? But it would have impact later on in the game, and it would change uh, how the game played and and the outcomes of the game because what the point of the game was to find virtue. And obviously, you're not acting virtuously if you're stealing from random people's houses, even though yeah. immediately there aren't any consequences. Mm -hmm. It had a... Uh, yeah, but it impact. just makes you feel the weight of your decisions, and it makes it, you know, mm -hmm. again, it transmits that emotion to you. Because, yeah, you might feel good now, but then you might feel guilt later. Like, you know, it's... it's It tells you, like, it's not it's even... Crazy, okay, it's it's really not good. necessarily okay just because this is a video game, which also means if it's not simply okay because it's a video game, what? how much more is it not necessarily okay in real life? Yeah. So. So... But it, it's it's again, this game is a little bit off, but it makes me excited. And again, I, I just I don't ever miss an opportunity to talk about why video games are an art form. My opinion, the highest art form out there. But that, that's my humble opinion. <laughs> so uh, but hit us up. Let us know what you think. Do you think this is going to be a game that changes people's minds or is it just going to be another in the long run of games that have come out? So hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at what's my face on Twitter. Google Plus and Facebook. Oh, always good way to go.